uh, distinguished chair of the session, Mr. Uh, Akbar, Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs of Bhutan, Dr. Dorji, Honor Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs of Nepal, Mr. Prakash Saud, Honorable Ministers of Foreign Affairs of Oman, Mr. Said Badar bin Hamad, uh, respected Deputy Secretary of State of the United States of America, Mrs. Wendy Sherman, distinguished guests, ladies, gentlemen, good morning. I'm uh, very deeply honored to participate in this sixth edition of the Indian Ocean Conference. I also join the others in thanking our gracious host, the government and the people of Bangladesh for the warm welcome since our arrival in this beautiful country. This uh, momentous occasion serves as testament to our collective dedication to warrant regional coordination, stability, and development. In these turbulent times when the world grapples with unprecedented challenges and non-traditional security threats, our region stands as a beacon of hope amidst the storm. The theme for this year's conference, Peace, Prosperity, and Partnership for Resilient Future, resonates very deeply with us, guiding our deliberations towards practical, and I say again, practical solutions that will shape the destiny of the region. Colleagues, today we have a rare opportunity, if you wish a clarion call, to champion peace and stability in the Indian Ocean and beyond. We must confront the harsh realities of conflict and instability, for they are the fertile breeding grounds that nurture nefarious activities and perpetuate a sense of insecurity. We cannot afford to remain passive uh, and to be passive spectators as the consequences of instability spill over into our lives, tarnishing the fabric of our societies. Take, for instance, the insidious um, trafficking of narcotics that plagues the Indian Ocean. Just within a mere decade, our once pristine waters have transformed into this highway for trade in illicit goods, a conduit of destruction that ravages our nations and compromises our very foundations. Let me illuminate uh, this, the gravity of this situation. In the small nation of Seychelles, a small island state, with its modest population of 100,000, we find ourselves shackled by the devastating grip of heroin addiction. Astonishingly, a staggering 10% of our population now bear the heavy burden of this affliction. The implications of such a calamity extend far beyond the individual itself, impacting the security, stability, the well-being of the entire region. Our workforce, our economic prowess, and the promise of a prosperous future all hang in the balance. We cannot allow this scourge to continue. Seychelles, though endowed with limited resources, has shown unwavering determination in the face of adversity. Through joint patrols in our regional with our regional partners, we have bolstered our maritime domain awareness, fortifying our ability to counter these criminal activities. We have strived to strengthen the pillars of law enforcement and judicial cooperation. Yet, my esteemed colleagues, let us be resolute in our understanding that these measures alone are simply not enough. We demand a united front, a symphony of coordinated efforts with information sharing as its harmonious refrain. Together, as a region, in unison, with international partners and organizations and agencies, we must preempt and dismantle these nefarious drug trafficking networks. But let us not only focus solely on the perils of narcotics. 
the challenge of combating illegal, unreported, unregulated fishing looms large over our heads, casting a shadow upon the sustainable management of our, of our marine resources and the livelihoods of our coastal communities. In this regard, Seychelles acknowledges the pivotal role played by existing regional and international frameworks and agreements on fisheries management, such as the Indian Ocean Tuna Commission, IOTC, and the Port Set Measures Agreement, the PSMA. We have embarked upon a national plan of action bolstering our monitoring, control, and surveillance capabilities. We have engaged civil society and the private sector, recognizing the significance of their involvement in combating our UU fishing. Furthermore, we have joined the Fisheries Transparency International, which is FITI, to uphold the principles of transparency and accountability. However, the need for further cooperation is indispensable. We must elevate our collective capacity and awareness in the realm of IUU, and we must also recognize that the success of our efforts to address the challenges facing our region requires a strong and unwavering commitment from all of us. Additionally, it is imperative that we acknowledge another critical issue that plagues our region, and that is human trafficking. This heinous crime preys on the most vulnerable among us, robbing individuals of their dignity and humanity. It is an affront to our shared values and freedom of justice, and we cannot turn a blind eye to this existence. The Indian Ocean region, with its vast and porous borders, is a prime target for human traffickers. Trafficking victims are often smuggled across borders, exploited for labor or sex, and subjected to unspeakable horrors. This is a challenge that must be addressed through collaborative efforts among all our nations. We need to strengthen our border control measures, improve law enforcement capabilities, and enhance cooperation among our countries to combat this issue effectively. My dear colleagues, to achieve our shared goals, we need to focus on building trust, enhancing dialogue, promoting cooperation among our countries. We must work towards a more integrated and connected region where trade and investment can flourish and where people can move freely, whether for business or for leisure. In conclusion, I would like to express my gratitude to the organizers, our organization of this, the organizers of this important conference and for providing us with the invaluable opportunity to exchange uh, ideas on how to address the challenges and opportunities facing our region. Let us continue to work together with a shared vision and purpose so that we can create a more stable, prosperous, peaceful Indian Ocean for ourselves and for future generations. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen.